Hi, it's Toby. Thank you for joining me. And today we're doing six ways to choose your focal point, six examples of composition in sketching. And this is basically what the title is all about. Your drawing needs a focal point. If you think your drawings look flat, look boring, that is because they need a focal point. As a follow-up video to this, I'll be doing a video about how to enhance your focal point. But this is six ways to choose your focal point. So what is way number one? We're going to start with the ones that you may well know about. And the first one, the most common one that we choose is the rule of thirds. So what's that? This is our page, but we divide it into three. We divide it into three again. And now we have these crossover points. So in our rule of thirds, if we transform this into a scene, well, we use these lines to create key divisions in our in our scene. So perhaps at the front we have a little a meadow going across, and then we use these dots to define key parts of the scene. So perhaps here we've got a tree, which is the key focal point on this side, and it's coming down here and it's focused on this dot. Maybe on this side we have a bird up there, and maybe something as mundane as a little seat. Maybe this is a park. So now we have obeyed our rule of thirds, splitting it into thirds and popping our key parts of the scene onto those little dots. The next one, which again many of us will have heard of, is called the golden spiral, the Fibonacci spiral. And that is a spiral which starts about here on the page and it just swings all the way around. And this is the idea of getting this kind of flow through your scene. And the tighter the spiral, the more detail, the more focal that point is in your scene. So how might that work in practice? Well, perhaps in this scene, what we've got is a little road. And on this side, we just have one building just looming over. And then as it comes around, we've got a, a sort of street which is in perspective and it looms up and it looms over. And here we've got a really big window. Maybe there's even a person in the window. Loads of detail going on. Down here, there's also maybe a door. And then as we flow away, we just got a few people. And you see how this detail is following this spiral round. So that is idea number two, the golden spiral or the Fibonacci spiral. Now on to more sort of common sense ideas perhaps, but also ideas which really do work. So what we've got next is the idea of the L, the L shape. And here we, similar to this, we divide our page with one line and another line. And you can see this is an L or depending on which way around you do it, it's a backwards L or, or whatever, but think of it as an L shape. And here, again, we use that L to divide our scene. So perhaps this time what we've got is a little windmill. And the windmill is in a big field. So look, this line becomes our field. And this line here becomes our windmill. And we just pop in our little, I don't know what they're called, turbines? Windmill arms, anyway. And you see how this scene is now replicating this shape, this L shape. And all these ways are just ways of framing your scene to make it more interesting. On now to another sort of classic example. And this is another letter. It's an S, an S curve or an S shape. And it might be like this, or it might be getting bigger at the bottom. And this one is great for, again, the feeling of uh, something disappearing into the distance. That disappearing thing might be a path or might be a road or it might be a river. For the sake of argument today, why don't we make it a little little road, a little sort of country road going off into the distance. Along one side, we've got a, a kind of a hedge. On this side, we've got some little grass. And as it curves and curves, we lose it over a hill about there. And then we've got maybe some little trees and things. But the focus is all around this curving S, this curving S of 
whatever it happens to be. In this case, we decided it's probably a road. You could have little details on the on the edge as well, but the focus, remember, all of these things are about the focus, not about all the extra bits. It's about choosing where to focus your scene. Now we're moving slightly away from letters into shapes. So this next one you could call the triangle or the pyramid and it looks something like this. And this is great for, well, things which are pyramidal in shape. That might be a pyramid, literally, it might literally be a pyramid. Or it might be, let's say, a mountain or a volcano. So you get your, your lovely mountain. It doesn't have to be symmetrical, but it's the idea of how this mountain is situated into your scene. And it's situated there look, like this triangle. And that allows us to focus down on what we're drawing and where we're drawing it. Now, last and by no means least is another really simple way of dividing up our page. And this time we're just doing it with a simple diagonal. And this can be straight or sometimes it can be looped, getting into a sort of just a, a lesser form of this. And this Again, this could be anything for the sake of argument this time. Why do we make this a kind of a forest scene? So we've got a kind of big tree, which is then going down a, a path, which gets smaller and smaller because it's in perspective. So we've got all these trees just lining this long path, this long edge. We could have something in the distance here. Maybe we've got just a little mountain or more uh, forest. But the key, the key is that our page is divided by this diagonal and our focus is all along that diagonal with these lovely trees. Again, we could have maybe some people walking along this path. Maybe there's even a little dog or something in the distance there. But the focus is on this lovely diagonal shape. And there we are, six ways to enhance your focal point. If that was fun, like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what's your favourite way or if I missed your favourite way out. You can join me on www.sketchloose.co.uk for more in-depth courses or on uh, my 10 days of sketching course, which is completely free. And there are links to that down below in the description. I'll see you on the next video. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.